So today we will be focusing on apoptosis and how the tumor cells escape from apoptosis. So generally talking about apoptosis, we'll write a simple definition. So apoptosis is simply programmed cell death. So apoptosis is generally a programmed cell death which occurs in multicellular organisms. Many events like plebbing, cell shrinkage, nuclear fragmentation, chromatin condensation, all these things will lead to apoptosis. Generally any external stimuli like radiation, chemical injury to the cell to which a certain extent the cell will undergo adaptive changes. But when, but when the cell could not handle the stress, then the cell undergoes apoptosis. So this is a general physiological process where the cell destroys itself. So there are two mechanisms, there are two general pathways through which the apoptosis takes place. So I'll just write two pathways. So which is an extrinsic pathway and an intrinsic pathway. So generally stimulation of either of these pathways results in activation of the inactive caspases 8 and caspase 9 respectively so in the extrinsic pathways there is activation of caspase 8 and in the intrinsic pathway there is activation of caspase 9 and these two initiate a proteolytic cascade involving an executioner caspases which would help to disassemble the cell in an orderly fashion example by means of phagocytosis without stimulating any inflammation so so these process do not stimulate any inflammation so this itself recognizes that Apoptosis is a general physiologic process. So we'll go into a picture to understand the two pathways of how the apoptosis take place. So you can see a picture here. So this picture here. So we'll just divide it. This is the extrinsic pathway which I'm denoting E and this here is the intrinsic pathway we're going to be talking about. So first we'll focus on the extrinsic pathway of the mechanism of apoptosis. So first we'll focus about the general mechanism of how the normal apoptosis takes place then we will discuss how the tumor cells escape from the apoptosis so firstly in the extrinsic pathway so the extrinsic pathway happens through the signaling of the death receptors which are the members of tnf receptor family so these are the two receptors here fasl and fas receptors which belongs under the family of tnf receptor family so when the FASL and FAS bind together, there is activation of FADD intracellularly. So FADD, we can see the definition here, which is the FAS associated protein with death domain. So when these two receptors bind to each other, there is activation of FADD, which is the fast associated protein with death domain. So this FADD this FADD undergoes a signaling complex which activates the inactive procaspase 8. So this procaspase 8 here was inactive and as soon as the FADD has been activated due to the binding of these two receptors, the procaspase 8 is now producing the caspase 8. So we can see here the caspase 8 as we were mentioning earlier, the extrinsic pathway, the main player here is caspase 8 and in the intrinsic it was caspase 9 which we would see later so there is activation of caspase 8 which will generally activate BAX gene which is a pro apoptotic gene which we will talk a little bit later but the main pathway is as soon as the caspase 8 is activated there is direct activation of caspase 3 which is uh, executioner caspase so as I said earlier the executioner caspase will directly disassemble the cell so there is a death substrate the caspase 3 would activate the death substrate and that would generally activate apoptosis where the phagocytic cells would commence phagocytosis. So this is all about the extrinsic pathway. So we'll just write the important thing regarding the extrinsic pathways. So extrinsic pathway. So there is binding of the FAS and FASL receptors. So there is binding of FAS and FASL receptors which would activate FADD which is 
the death domain which would further activate procaspase eight and the procaspase eight would activate caspase eight and the caspase eight would activate caspase three so the main player here is the caspase eight and eventually that would activate caspase three which is uh, executioner caspase which would help to disassemble the cell in an orderly fashion so this is all about the extrinsic pathways and the main player here is the caspase 8 so now we'll focus on the intrinsic pathway and we'll go back to the picture so so now we'll focus on the intrinsic pathway so we will focus on the right side of the picture where we can see that any external stress radiation or chemicals which would damage the cell so that is dna damage and there will be p53 response and we've already done a video on p53 and in order to know what the p53 response is please check the earlier video so that is so the main thing in the intrinsic pathways is regarding the permeability of the mitochondrial membrane and as you can see here that is bax and bak which is over here so these are basically pro apoptotic factors which would stimulate the release of cytochrome c from the mitochondrial membrane so these bax and bak genes increase the permeability of the mitochondrial membrane and helps in expressing the cytochrome c from the mitochondrial membrane so we'll just denote the pro apoptotic genes here so here i have denoted the bax and bak genes which would promote the apoptotic function and there is also bcl2 and bclxl genes which are anti apoptotic genes which would prevent the action of apoptosis and there is another class of proteins which are the bh3 only proteins which we can see here these regulate the action between the pro apoptotic and anti apoptotic genes so these are the regulatory genes or proteins which would decide whether the apoptosis should go or to prevent the apoptotic function so as you can see here there is activation of bax and bak genes so these are pro apoptotic genes so these enhance the process of apoptosis so these increase the permeability of mitochondria and the mitochondria releases cytochrome c so we can see here there is cytochrome c which combines with APAF1 so APAF1 we can see here which is the apoptotic protease activating factor so all these things helps in the process of apoptosis and eventually there is activation of caspase 9 as we were discussing earlier the caspase 9 is the main player in the intrinsic pathway and the caspase 9 would activate caspase 3 so as we said earlier caspase 3 is an execution of caspase so they commence apoptosis so eventually the extrinsic and the intrinsic pathways leads in activation of caspase 3 so this is all about the intrinsic pathways and the important thing is to remember about the bax and bak genes and bcl2 and bclx genes which are anti apoptotic and the, the bax and bak are pro apoptotic genes so this is how normally the apoptotic process takes place by two pathways so generally whenever the cell is disturbed by any external radiation chemical injury or any internal changes regarding its chromosomes or any morphological change the cell itself dis destroys so this process is apoptosis but the tumor cells find ways to prevent apoptosis so there is no apoptosis taking place and the cells are infected by tumor and they still so they just want to undergo invasive and metastatic growth so they just want to multiply they don't want to die so this is the basic concept so how the tumor cells escape from apoptosis and they would lead to excessive growth so now we'll go back to the script we'll just write the important notes about intrinsic pathway where there is the main thing is regarding the permeability of the mitochondria 
and releasing of cytochrome C which would combine with APAF1 which would activate caspase 9 which would again activate caspase 3 so caspase 3 is an executional caspase and there is action of apoptosis so this is the general mechanism of apoptosis where there is two pathways and which would lead to self destruction a programmed cell death so how does the tumor cells evade the apoptosis so these here are the general mechanisms used by the tumor cells to evade cell death there are six points so we'll see all the six points are denoted in the picture so the first one is reduced cd95 level so here is the first point which we were denoted in the script so in this first point there is reduced cd95 levels or reduced action of fas so when there is reduced action of fas there is no activation of fadd so this is the first place where the tumor cells try to escape apoptosis from and there is also inactivation of the death induced signaling complex which is the second point which i am denoting here and thirdly we can see here where there is reduced releasing of cytochrome c from the mitochondria due to upregulation of bcl2 genes so we can see here bcl2 genes due to certain mutations in the bcl2 region the bcl2 as we discussed earlier we can see here bcl2 is an anti apoptotic gene so this does not support apoptosis so the tumor cells would increase the amount of the bcl2 in the intracellular intracellularly and the bcl2 would prevent apoptosis so that the tumor cells can multiply and proliferate more and more and number four is loss of p53 gene reduced so when there is loss of p53 gene there is no action of bax and bak gene so the bax and bak genes are pro apoptotic genes which would come from p53 so when there is loss of p53 there is no action of bax and back so there is no apoptosis taking place and the fifth way is over here where there is loss of apaf1 so we can see number five denoted here where there is loss of apaf1 which is the apoptotic protease activating factor so when there is mutations regarding this factor the tumor cells can evade or escape the apoptotic process and finally we have iap here denoting the six iap are the inhibitors of apoptotic proteins we can see here the definition of iap which are inhibitors of apoptosis proteins which are situated intracellularly and the tumor cells also upregulate the formation of iap so that they could prevent the function of caspases so when the caspases 9 is blocked by iap there is no formation of caspase 3 so, the, so there is no apoptosis so these are the six general mechanisms by which the tumor cells escape the apoptosis and involved in cell proliferation so so these are the six mechanisms which i was talking about so by using all these mechanisms the tumor cells escape from apoptosis and involved in cell proliferation and initially we were talking about the general mechanisms of the apoptosis so this is the general mechanisms which takes place in apoptosis in a normal cell and if the cell is affected by tumor so these are the six mechanisms by which the neoplastic cell escapes the apoptosis